Kathleen Seymour on the other end of our AT&T line right this very moment. Nice to hear your voice again. I'm going to say welcome to the program. Thank you. Nice to be here. Sure is nice to hear you. Uh, do you get, um, for which role do you think you're best known? You know, that's very interesting because it depends on the generation. Mm. Um, you know, for some people it's somewhere in time. For some people it's still the Bond film. Obviously a lot of people, Dr. Quinn, and the younger generation, I would say Wedding Crash. <laughs> Which, so you know it, it's all over the board yeah uh, and of course uh when you uh when you, do you ever show your movies uh to your kids and sit you know and say hey you know you would have missed this one but let's watch it together is that something you would do it, you know it's funny you should say that but uh i don't think they've seen half the things i've done i think sometimes accidentally they've seen something and they've gone wow mom that was actually pretty good but uh you know when you do like 32 hour miniseries or 170 episodes of of Dr. Quinn, it's very hard to get their attention. Um, but they, what they've seen, they've liked. And um, some of my kids have been in movies with me, so obviously they've seen those. Yeah. Uh, openheartsfoundation.org is where Jane Seymour would like you to go and have a look, see at the uh, work that she's done for K Jewelers and the work that she's done for charity. I would be remiss, and we've done this in the past, but I, I called Dan Musser yesterday, and I called Ken Hayward at Grand Hotel, and I said, uh, Mrs. Seymour is going to be on the program with me. And uh, any, any message to pass along? And, of course, they wanted to remind you that the, this is the 30th anniversary, believe it or not, of uh, Somewhere in Time, and they will roll out the red carpet if you can make your way uh, at any time uh, back to well, Grand I'm, Hotel. I'm definitely planning on, I put it into my schedule, and uh, I'm hoping that I can get to go there. I know there's something else I have to do that, that weekend, so... Um, if I can find a way of getting to two places in, uh, in very close timing, I'm going to be able to do it. And hopefully my, my daughter, Katie, who was there for one of these events, will come too. Because she looks exactly like I did when I did Somewhere in Time. And the fans loved it last time she came. Oh, wow. Is there any, uh, is there any movie or television show you've done that's been more associated with a place that people can go and experience for themselves than, than mm. Grand Hotel? No, not, not really. I think that was, uh, well, obviously you can go to the state park where we shot, um, uh, in the Santa Monica Mountains, where we shot Dr. Quinn. That, that set's still there. Um, sadly, War and Remembrance, you can go to Auschwitz, you can check yeah. that out. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I think uh, Somewhere in Time and the Grand Hotel is, is very, very special. Well, that's so sweet of you. Do you think, uh, how do you like Daniel Craig as 007? Everyone asks me, I think he's great. I think, though, each one of the bonds that they had in the era that they had them was absolutely perfect. I mean, Roger Moore was, was perfect for the 70s. He, he was, you know, very tongue-in-cheek and humorous and, you know, different. Each one was different. Do you ever run into Roger Moore anywhere in your travels? And, yes, and... I do. Roger and then Pierce. Um, Pierce uh, lives down the street from me. He's a good friend. Um, sometimes I, yeah, I've seen Roger a few times. Do you live in Los Angeles or Malibu? I live in Malibu, yes. Isn't that something? A couple yeah. of 007s right down the street there. <laughs> Although, you know, I always imagine those guys, and you too, are rarely ever home. I, I know uh, Roger, you know, spends time in Monte Carlo and gets around, and Pierce has a home in Hawaii and, and of course, probably gets back to Ireland when he can. But, uh, but you know, you, you, you're people on the move all the time. Uh, I try not to. You know, I have a family. I, I love to be together with them. I have grandchildren, but I am on the move a lot. You're, you're right. You know, I have a lot of businesses that I do and, and of course, filming and takes me away. So, yeah, I do travel a bit. What's that like when you're, uh, maybe you're at the Ivy or you're, you're in a shop somewhere and you look across the counter or you look down the, down the aisle and someone is wearing one of your open heart jewelry pieces? That must be very satisfying. It is very satisfying. And, of course, the amazing thing is that they always have a story to tell. You know, people will have a piece of jewelry and they'll say, oh, thank you, it's a nice piece of jewelry. But when it comes to the open heart, they'll immediately open up and, ex and explain why it means so much to them, what they've been through in their lives, you know, what the, the reason was, why they were given it. And, uh, and it's incredibly satisfying because, you know, this was my mother's inspiration, really. My mother survived a concentration camp, a, a Japanese camp in Indonesia. Mm. She was a Dutch native, and that's why she was living there. And she always said to me growing up, the darling... In life, when there is a challenge, the chances are that most people will close off their heart. But if you can accept what's happened, open your heart, and reach out in some way to help someone else, there will always be someone worse off than you. And by that very action, purpose and love will come in your life. And I, the, her other thing that she always said, which I think is incredibly important, is you can, un, until you can love yourself, 
you're never going to be able to love another person or be loved. It's, and that's, of course, the hardest thing to do. But, um, you know, I, I'm very excited. It's Mother's Day coming up. I think that's sort of the very special day for open hearts because um, there is no love in the world like the love that a mother has for their child. And I always tell my children, it doesn't matter how naughty they are or what they do, you know, it's you love your children. You just do. You're kind of, um, and, and, you, you, and you'll do whatever it takes. And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful occasion. You know, everyone has a mother. Not everyone has the privilege of being a mother, but everyone has had a mother, and it's a really important day, and it, it's a great time to, to, you know, show how much you love them by opening your heart to them and just saying, hey, hey, Mom, thank you. Thank you for what you've done, you know. Thank you for uh, being there for me. And, well, thank yeah, you for what you've done, <laughs> openheartsfoundation.org. And say hi to Roger and Pierce for me if you bump into them on the beach. I will. Check out the, the foundation because we do. We honor amazing people who've taken a challenge in life and turned it into an opportunity to help others. So our next event is at my home, actually, on May 9th. Wow. Uh, but you can check it out on uh, Open Hearts Foundation. No kidding. We can go, come to your home ourselves at openheartsfoundation.org. And I'll say hi to Ken Hayward and Dan Musser at Grand Hotel. I'm sure they're listening or they'll be uh, hearing the podcast anyway of the great Jane Seymour.